Charles Kraft is my name. America is my nation. Seattle is my dwelling place, and art is my salvation. <laughs>
and, and do human bone china. That's what the human bones look like when they come out of the crematory. I got into Ripley's Believe It or Not last year. This is um, Ripley's Believe It or Not Special Edition 2006. And um, I'm in here with my uh, human bone china. Look, there I am. Body of art, bona, bona fide. This is like one of the biggest feathers in my beret. This is bizarre. So, Bizarre Magazine got a hold of this. And then here's, here's a book on pop surrealism, which would be, this is like the first book that was ever done on, on lowbrow art. And right after this was published, another book came out by another author, but this is uh, by um, Kirsten Anderson, who is the, the director of the Rock LaRue Gallery in Seattle. Pop surrealism is lowbrow, except pop surrealism doesn't offend the lowbrow artists who find that terminology demeaning. Mark Ryden is the current, uh, uh, you know, so, um, master of this genre. And uh, he had a retrospective at the Fry Museum. So the lowbrow art is making inroads into the museums now. It's imagery that belongs to the public. Tattoo imagery, circus banner, art, pulp fiction, illustration, cartooning. They, they included me as a lowbrow artist. And here you see again, I mean, that's the same piece as in the lowbrow book as, the, as in the highbrow book. So I'm straddling two, two art worlds. I don't own a gun that works. And I don't know much about guns themselves. I just know that this is a fairly uh, potent um, shape to decorate the way I do and that the people want them because I'm, I'm constantly filling orders for these things. It started out as a, uh, a comment about the war in Yugoslavia because I'd seen so many Bosnian militiamen with AK-47 strapped to their back and then it became kind of a comment just about America and its fascination with guns. It's just like a, a stupid gun made out of a breakable material decorated with blue patterns that, that look like your grandmother's china. And so people respond to it. Um, and some of them respond to it favorably and, and some respond unfavorably. And I'll tell you where I get the most unfavorable response it was in Holland when I went to learn more about Delft making. It's a tradition in Holland and they have a, a um, real sense of pride in their Delft wear. And so when I came along and started making these uh, windmills with swastika blades and Adolf Hitler teapots, since they'd gone through the occupation, you know, during World War II, they were offended. And they were super offended by me using human uh, crematory ash in my clay body. I think the Dutch should just lighten up. I mean, seriously, these people are supposed to be the most liberal group in Western Europe, and here they are getting all huffy about you know, me um, making light of the, their Delft wear. <laughs> I can't help myself. I just, I've always been like this. If it's not doing something in art, I would be offending people with my writing or something like that. You know, I can't not be kind of a smart aleck. One of the things I don't like about artists who do controversial art is that they they go, well, I'm, I'm an artist, you know, and I'm just commenting on, um, you know, something. And they don't assume any responsibility for what they've done. It's like, oh, it's up to the viewer. Well, I know exactly what I'm doing, and any good artist knows exactly what b buttons they're going to be pushing, or they wouldn't be artists. So. Uh, I'm, I take, you know, full responsibility for uh, the imagery that I use, and I know it's loaded, and that's exactly why I use it. <laughs> I mean.